So I love coming to this area here in Beijing because I, I see this old train here and it helps me really appreciate engineering. And China is excelling, excellent, amazing at engineering and just building stuff. And I do wish I could say the same about the UK these days. And nowhere is this more evident than how both countries have approached building high-speed railway. In China, they have an outstanding high-speed railway system and it has to be experienced to be really understood. In the UK, the powerhouse of building railways way back in the day, around about the 1900s, that was the heyday for the British railway building. Now, it's a lost cause. In fact, in the UK, it can actually be cheaper to fly to somewhere than take the train. And that is the UK touting their green credentials. That's how bad it is on the West Coast Main Line at the moment. And it is significantly cheaper for me to fly to Manchester and back to see people in Liverpool than to get a train to Liverpool. So China now has 46,000 kilometres of high speed rail. And, and I've used it many occasions. It's amazing. Going from centre of one city to another city centre at about 350 kilometres an hour without feeling the train shake or move and doing so in relative comfort. I have travelled many a train journey and I've also travelled in business class and it is very convenient, very comfortable. I've travelled business class on some short trips in China and I've got to say that's a brilliant experience. One of the things I do like about travelling by train in China is that you see the price, you pick a class of ticket and that's what you pay. In the UK, it's a jigsaw puzzle of prices that you need to have a, a maths degree to be able to work out what is the best route, the quickest route and the cheapest route. Often the longest route, believe it or not, is the cheapest. So yeah, again, the green credentials for the UK is not exactly that valid. Britain actually does stupidity very, very well, as per Brexit and as per now bombing Ukraine while dismantling your own military. Hmm. So I was um, reading a story on the CNN website explaining that the UK is currently building the most expensive railway network in the world, um, the High Speed Rail 2. And when you read the headline, you would think, wow, that must be some cool, amazing railway system. Wrong. It is a shambles. It is costing. And I'm quoting the story here on CNN, on the website. It said, Britain's High Speed 2 rail project is now costing an eye-watering $416 million per mile. <laughs> the story then states that this is only matched by the equally troubled $128 billion Californian high-speed rail project in the United States, obviously, which is estimated that that is going to cost about $200 million per mile. So the UK is $416 million per mile, the USA $200 million per mile. Europe, roughly it's about 65 million per mile. How much do you think it is here in China for the high speed rail? It's, a, it's approximately 20 million dollars per mile. Now all these figures are approximate because it is very difficult to calculate, but still the difference between China and the UK is just astronomical. And I understand there are reasons for it, like the cost of land, etc. But there just comes a point in a project where you just might as well just call it a day. Oh, and by the way, China has a physical high-speed rail network. It's there, I can see it, I can travel on it. It's amazing. The UK, well, <laughs> we still have no idea when it will ever be completed. And again, Britain being brilliant at being stupid. For me, the UK government, the policy, the choices that they sometimes make reflect the character in the new Penguin series. And by the way, if you have not watched that TV series yet, then I recommend it. It's called The Penguin. It's the best TV I have seen in years. Anyway, I digress. I recommend anyone who comes to China, come here, visit. Please, you'll love it. Um, be amazed at what you see. Travel by train from city to city and discover a country that is beautiful, friendly, safe, cheap to live and to visit. And if you do make that choice, you will see a China that is so different from what they tell you about on the Western media. 
And if you actually take the time to read the story on CNN that I referenced, you will see that they managed to write a story about high-speed rail, and in that story, they really didn't talk anything about the success of China. Now, for me, that is good engineering of the English language. This is me. Peace out. Catch you soon.